Ryan talks so much about you. You must be the famous Chloe. Come in, come in. Sit down and make yourself comfortable. Mi casa et tu casa, or whatever it is they say to try and make people feel comfortable with visiting. <laughs> Just look at you. You're even prettier than the photos Ryan showed me of you. I'm so happy that my Ryan is going to be marrying such a lovely girl. Mom, please, don't overwhelm her on the first meeting. We've barely been here for five minutes. Let the poor girl breathe a little. I know that you always wanted to have a daughter of your own, but slow down a little. You don't want to be making poor Chloe feel uncomfortable before she's even stepped through the door now, do you? Oh, it's fine. Don't worry about me. It's nice to receive a warm welcome. Oh, Ryan, stop your nonsense and get lost so that Chloe and I can do some mother-daughter bonding. I have so many questions to ask her over dinner. Come and take a seat at the dining table, Chloe. When I heard you were coming, I went out and bought some top quality steak for dinner. It looks so tasty. Thank you so much for going out of your way to make such a lovely dinner. Steak is one of my favorites, you know. I'm sure I'll enjoy every last bite. Hey, what about me, Mom? Do I not get steak as well? Oh, you can just eat some potatoes and vegetables. Hey, that's not fair. Oh, I see you're still wearing the bracelet I sent you for Mother's Day. Well, it was the first ever gift I got from my soon-to-be daughter-in-law. How could I not wear it? It really is just my style. We hadn't even met in person when you bought it for me, but it's as if you somehow telepathically knew what my tastes were. I'm so, so glad that you like it. Well, of course I like it. Not every daughter-in-law goes out of her way to buy something so nice for her mother-in-law, especially when she's not even officially married into the family yet. It really does mean a lot to me that you like it so much. I heard that your own mother threw the bracelet you made her in the trash, saying she didn't need useless things like that. How could a mother say something like that to her own child? Well, you see, this son of mine isn't the most thoughtful, and he never knows when it's my birthday or when it's Mother's Day or anything like that. When I received such a lovely handmade present from you, it made me even more excited to finally find out what it's like to have a daughter. You have no idea how grateful I was. Thank you so much for saying that. Thank you so much. I'm the one who received the present. I should be the one thanking you. What on earth are you doing crying for? I'm so sorry. I'm not making a great first impression right now, am I? Oh, no, darling. Don't say things like that. You've made a lovely impression on me already. I really wouldn't normally cry in front of people like this. I'm so sorry. I don't know what's gotten into me. How awful must her parents have been towards her if she's getting so affected by such a tiny thing? Bless her heart. I can't begin to imagine what kind of things she must have been through. My mom really likes my wife. She's liked her since the moment she met her. She always calls her to come over whenever she's bought something particularly tasty to eat so that they can eat together. And she always buys my wife a present or two whenever she goes out shopping. Even before we were officially married, she was already treating her like her real daughter. She always says that my wife looked so genuine and pretty when she saw her for the first time, and she felt a really strong maternal instinct towards her. I was worried that she was coming on too strong, and that my wife would feel uncomfortable, and I told her that she could say no to plans with my mom or not accept a gift from her if she felt like it was too much, but she said that she was fine with it. 
She said that she was really happy that my mom was so welcoming of her, and she didn't feel uncomfortable in the slightest. She accepted my mom's affection with open arms, and seeing the two of them getting on so well, and my wife being so accepting of my mom's attitude when it could be seen as overbearing, made me fall in love with my wife all over again. We are now happy and content in our married life together. Hey, Chloe. Shall we go on a little girl's date today? Just the two of us? But don't you think that her men will be jealous if we exclude them? I don't care. Let them be jealous. If they're that upset, then the two of them can go and do something together as well. Me wanting to spend a little time with my daughter-in-law is none of their business, to be honest. If they're bored, they can go fishing or whatever it is men do at the weekend. Do you know what Ryan said to me the other day? He said that anyone would think that I'm your real daughter and that he's your son-in-law because we always look so close. I think that was his way of saying he's a little jealous. <laughs> oh, he's so immature. What a big baby. Is he really getting jealous over something like this? Honestly, I thought that perhaps he would mature with age, but that clearly isn't going to happen anytime soon. Well, regardless of whether he's jealous or not, I'm really happy that we have such a good relationship. I'm always so grateful to you for treating me so nicely. It's because you're such a lovely girl. It's natural to want to be nice to people who are nice, isn't it? The nicer you are, the more it makes me want to do nice things for you. That son of mine is always grumpy, and he's always getting jealous about this little thing or that little thing. <laughs> oh, would you look at the time. Come on, let's get going before they come home so they can't nag us. Okay, I'll just go and get changed, and then I'll be ready to go. Hey, why did you take so long to do anything? I asked you to come over yesterday. Why are you only coming today? There's so much to do around the house, you know. You've got lazy ever since you moved out and got married, you know. I'm sorry, Mom. We had some things to do at my in-law's house yesterday. Don't go around using your in-laws as an excuse. Do you only consider them your family now? Honestly, it seems like you're always using them as an excuse to neglect us when we're the ones who raised you. We should still be your priority, you know? Blood is thicker than water. I said I'm sorry, Mom. Oh, whatever. I don't need your apologies. You're always apologizing. Instead of apologizing over and over, you should be thinking about how to change your actions so that next time you won't have anything to apologize for. Honestly, you would never think you were my daughter. You seem to conveniently forget you are whenever you like. I'm sorry, Mom. I'll try harder from now on. Well, now that you're here, you'd better get started with the cleaning. The house hasn't been cleaned in ages because you haven't been around. Go ahead and get started with your brother's room. You had also better have dinner ready by the time your brother gets back. He's been doing extra classes with his math tutor, so he's going to be really tired and really hungry. Ugh, you're so lazy I can barely look at you. Hurry up and get started already. What did you just think of the conversation you just heard? It wasn't the kind of exchange you would expect to hear between mother and daughter, was it? After hearing my wife's conversations with both my mother and hers, you would think that my mother was her real mother and her real mother was the evil mother-in-law. My mother really loves my wife, whereas her own mother has always treated her as second best to her younger brother. My wife's family do nothing but order her around, making her do all the housework. From cooking to cleaning and everything in between, 
even after she moved out and got married, they still expect her to do all of those things. You really wouldn't think that she was their daughter. You would have thought that she was the domestic servant. The first time I ever went to my wife's family home, I even went as far as to quietly ask my wife if her mom was really her biological mother. My wife just said that she really was related to her mother by blood, and she was made to do these things because she's the oldest daughter and her family believed that that was her role. I felt so awful for my wife, when it was so blatantly obvious that her parents favored her younger brother over her. Her brother's always getting praised by his parents for doing absolutely nothing. Consequently, he's turned out to be quite the spoiled brat. He's really unpleasant to be around and quite frankly, rude to everyone. Hello? Hey Ryan, it's me. I am speaking to Ryan, right? Uh, is this Tyler by any chance? Oh, good, it is you. Glad to hear you remembered what my voice sounded like. I get told it's quite distinctive. Some girls have even said it's unforgettable. I hadn't really heard yours in a while, so I'd kind of forgotten what it sounded like. I wonder why that is. When your sister and I go to visit, you're always having extra tutoring or you're out with your friends or something like that. The only reason we never see you is because you always have an excuse ready. Why did you call me, by the way? I'm a little surprised to be receiving a call from someone who normally goes out of his way to avoid seeing me. <laughs> Do you think I called you because I want to talk to you? Do you think I like listening to the sound of your voice? If you haven't got anything to say, I'm hanging up. Wait a second, Ryan. It's not nice to be so cold towards your brother-in-law who's calling you for the first time in a while, you know? You're still as ill-mannered as ever, huh? So, you're allowed to be rude to me, but I'm not allowed to hang up when I'm tired of you, is that it? You haven't grown up at all since I first met you. Yo, oh, please. There's no need to talk about the past. And besides, if you're talking about our first meeting, my mom thought that you were in the wrong, not me. Well, you kept making rude comments, ignoring your sister when she was talking and blatantly disrespecting her instead. And of course your mother would never think you were in the wrong. She thinks that the sun shines out of your backside. Well, I am the oldest son in my family, and I can do whatever I like. My sister, on the other hand, is the oldest daughter, and everybody knows that the oldest daughter is the one who has to make all the sacrifices for the family. No, really, is that how it works? I wasn't aware of that supposed universal philosophy. Oh, by the way, I'd forgotten why I'd actually called you today. You're coming over to our house on Thanksgiving, right? If you're coming, you should come the day before to help with the preparations. What are you saying? We can't do that. Both of us have to work the day before Thanksgiving. What do you mean? Can't you just get the day off or something? Loads of people do it. I'd rather use my time of work for more important things, thank you very much. And besides, we're normally really busy around that time of year, and it wouldn't be fair on my team for me to take time off at such a crucial time. Is it really that much of a big deal? Can't you just say that there was a family emergency or something? Do you really have to stick so closely to the rules? Just because you don't have any respect for anyone or anything, it doesn't mean that other people are also like you, you know? You have a lot of growing up to do. Who still asks their sister to give them an allowance at your age? Well, even when I ask her, she doesn't give it to me. You guys are far too tight on your purse strings. I bet this is your doing. She used to give me money before she started living with you, you know? But now I don't get a single cent off of her. You're obviously manipulating her into neglecting her duties. Well, it's because you're old enough to be going off and earning your own money now. Well, I think that she should be a little more caring towards her one and only younger brother. Honestly, if I'd known things were going to turn out like this, I would have never let my sister marry someone like you. Excuse me? 
I don't think you are entitled to have any say about who your sister marries, young man. I mean, things were better for me before she got together with you, to be honest. She would give money regularly to both me and my parents back when she was single. My parents also preferred the way things were back then, but I'm not the only one losing out, you know. If you're just going to carry on talking like this, I am hanging up. We will not be coming over the day before Thanksgiving, and that is final. Then will you at least be coming on Thanksgiving itself? My mom will be upset to hear that nobody will be there to help her. Ryan? Ryan! Huh? Did he seriously just hang up on me while I was still talking? Honestly, if he wasn't my brother-in-law, I would give him what for. Hey, Ryan! What are you doing coming so late? Did Tyler not call you the other day? I told him to tell you to come over the day before Thanksgiving as well. Well, I remember very clearly telling him that we were not coming over on the day before Thanksgiving. Did he not relay that message to you? Even so, if he told you to come over the day before Thanksgiving, you should have come over the day before Thanksgiving. Is work really that important that you can't just miss one day? Well, yes, as a matter of fact, work is quite important. We are both of the opinion that work comes before personal matters, and my mom agrees. She wasn't unreasonable pestering us to come over when we weren't able to. Well, that's her business. She doesn't seem to make a big deal out of Thanksgiving. But in our house, Thanksgiving is a huge event. We have the whole extended family coming over, and I don't have enough hands to do everything by myself. I think you're exaggerating a little there, Velma. There aren't that many people coming. There can't be more than ten people lined up to stay for dinner, surely. Will you shut up? As a son-in-law, you should know your place and help out with the preparations. Get to work already. I need you to do the cleaning and set the table. I also think the bathroom needs another clean if we're going to be having guests. Setting the table is the most important job there is, so if you mess up in the slightest, you will have ruined the whole evening for everyone. I don't think I'm obligated to put up with this treatment at all. If I had known that this was how things were going to be, we wouldn't have come here at all today. Oh, shut up and just get on with it. I am so tired, I might collapse. Hey, Mom, we're here. Oh, my poor Chloe. You must have had a really rough day, huh? Uh, hello, Mom. It was hard for me, too, you know? Honestly, you only have eyes for your daughter-in-law these days. Oh, I'm sure it wasn't as hard for you as it was for Chloe. You look fine. But look at your poor wife. She looks like a shell of herself. Do you even have the energy to talk, my poor baby? Were they mean to you again? Meredith, I... Oh, look at the poor tired girl. You have dark circles under your eyes, sweetheart. Come on in and let's have something to eat. Or would you prefer to have a little nap first? Did you cook something, Mom? There's an absolutely amazing smell coming from the kitchen. I prepared a few things because I knew that you two would be coming tonight. I was sure that you wouldn't have been able to get more than two bites to eat at Velma's house. Oh, wow. You prepared a whole turkey just for us? Are you sure you want to eat it, though? Both of you reek of turkey already. Of course we do. Like you said, we barely got to touch the turkey at Velma's. We were just the ones carving it. Then make sure you both eat your fill of turkey here. I also went out of my way to prepare all the sides I know you like, Chloe. You like sweet potatoes, don't you? Yes, I do, Meredith. Oh, sweetheart, why are you crying? Honey, are you okay? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I just 
feel like I don't deserve to be treated so nicely when you got treated like a slave and made to do this and that at my mom's house. I'm sure you're the one who had to suffer the most, Chloe. Even if Ryan was getting ordered around a little tonight, it probably wasn't even the half of what you had to put up with growing up. Look at him. He's clearly just pretending to be exhausted. He's fine. Even so, if it wasn't for me, he wouldn't have had to work so hard today. He could have spent the whole day comfortably at home with you. Well, I'm sure having you by his side was worth the sacrifice. Oh, my poor darling, you look like you're about to collapse. Ryan, hurry up and clear a space for Chloe on the couch before she passes out. Mom, can't you see that I'm tired as well? I want to lie down too. Oh, don't be ridiculous and hurry up and clear her a space. After she's had some rest, we'll start eating. I'd better go and reheat the food. My wife often cried when it came to her family. She would cry whenever she would get off the phone with a member of her family. And whenever there's some kind of family holiday like Thanksgiving, she just ends the day crying her eyes out. I'm quite useless at comforting her, so whenever she gets upset, I take her over to my mom's house. Watching my mom embrace her and comfort her makes me think that she acts way more like a real mother towards her than her mother ever did. Whenever we go to her mother's house for this holiday and that holiday, we always end up at my mom's house at the end of the day. My mom will always have all of my wife's favorite foods prepared to make sure that she's all comfortable. My wife will always cry tears of gratefulness and hug my mom, and then she'll usually collapse out of exhaustion. My wife had really wanted to distance herself from her family after getting married, but she found it was much harder to cut them off than she had originally thought. She said that she would slowly sort things out and asked me to be patient and wait just one more year. My mom just watched from the sidelines because my wife told both me and my mom to not interfere with the situation with her family and that she would handle it herself. We both respected her wishes and tried our best to make her life as comfortable as possible while supporting her in whatever way we could. However, we don't really expect her family to change their ways anytime soon. It's hard for people to change fundamentally, especially inherently bad people. There was an incident with her family that I will never forget as long as I live. I can't believe your poor father was taken from this world so suddenly, Ryan! It was such a horrendous accident out of nowhere. There was nothing that could have been done for him. It's always the best of us that get taken first, isn't it? It's so unfair. I hope you're holding up okay. Thank you for your kind words, Velma. Hey, I'm here too, Ryan. Yeah, thanks for coming, Tyler. But why are there so few people here? I was expecting it to be way busier. Was your dad not that popular? Excuse me? Or maybe it's because he didn't pass away after suffering from a long illness and people didn't bother coming because dying in a car accident doesn't have the same level of drama attached to it. Tyler, please. I'm so sorry, Brian. Please don't mind him. Is there anything you need any help with? No, I don't think so. The extended family have helped to take care of everything. And as Tyler so aptly pointed out, there aren't actually that many people here. I can help to greet the guests if you don't really feel like it. I'm sure lots of people are still on the way from the church service. It's fine, don't worry. My cousins are en route from the church still, and I think they'll be the last people to arrive. Why don't you just sit down and have something to eat? There was a sudden influx of guests, even some people who weren't at the funeral service. I really was rushed off of my feet today. I'm really thankful to everyone who came to pay their respects to my dad, though. I'm telling you, you need to get this sorted out. I told you, it's a firm no. What you're asking right now is completely out of the question. Huh? What is going on over here? I didn't expect people to be hanging around outside the bathrooms. No? It's my wife and her mom. 
I wonder what they're talking about. Well, as his daughter-in-law, I don't think there's anything wrong with getting your hands on some of his inheritance. It will be very wrong for you to receive absolutely nothing from him, I think. Mom, I told you already. What father-in-law leaves inheritance for his daughter-in-law? I'm not his flesh and blood. Why would I be entitled to receive anything from him? But you've always been so good to him and his family. Surely you should at least get something. You should be asking for them to put something, anything in your name. No, I don't want to. Even if I did receive something, I would refuse to accept it. Do you know why? Because I know that you would just take it off me at the first opportunity. Why would I accept money that I knew would immediately be stolen from me? What did you just say? Just stop this already, Mom. This is my father-in-law's wake. We just came from his funeral. Have some respect. Do you have any idea how inappropriate you're being right now? And you're right. I have been really good to my in-laws. Do you want to know why? Because they actually treat me like a daughter should be treated. They show me love and affection and are actually interested in what I have to say. All the things that you and dad never did for me. So of course I go out of my way to be nice to them. When people are nice to you, it makes you want to do nice things for them back. Of course I'm going to return all the love and kindness they've shown me. It's only natural. You and my in-laws are worlds apart, and you could never understand my relationship with them because you've never shown me anything other than contempt my entire life. Hey, watch your mouth. Even though you so blatantly favored Tyler over me, I never once complained about it, did I? Even that time that I didn't have time to make dinner for Tyler, so I went to leave so I could make it to my appointment on time, and Dad threw his ashtray at my face? Even that time that Tyler deliberately broke my favorite toy? Even that time that Tyler cut his hand because he was playing around with some scissors, and I was blamed for not keeping an eye on him? Every single time, I just held it all in and apologized, even though I didn't owe anybody anything. Has anyone in our family ever been willing to take my side? No. Has anyone in our family ever been willing to listen to anything I had to say? No. What's the big deal? This is your role in the family as the eldest daughter. Are you really that upset about getting scolded instead of your brother about a couple of things when you were little? Do you really think that getting scolded is what I was upset about? Of course not. The real injustice I felt. What truly hurt me is all those years I've lived without anything to call my own. No belongings, no loved ones. I am sick and tired of you taking away everything that's mine. And now what? You want me to ask for some of my father-in-law's inheritance to be put in my name? It's obvious that once I managed to get it, you would snatch it away from me, just like you did with everything else I ever had. So what? The oldest daughter should be willing to share everything she has with her family. That's just the way things are. The one who needs to make sacrifices for the family is the oldest daughter. Just because you're married now, that doesn't mean that anything has changed. Other people's daughters would be happily giving their families their money without a fuss. Why do you have to be so difficult? Can you please stop this already? Did you really think that I believed for one second that you came here today to pay your respects to my father-in-law? Of course you didn't. You only came here today because you smelled a chance to get your hands on some money, didn't you? I've put up with you always looking down on me and ignoring what I have to say. I held in my anger when you treated my husband in the same way. But how dare you, how dare you think that you're in any way entitled to get your hands on my father-in-law's money? Are you even human? Do you have any kind of conscience? Shut up! I don't see what's wrong with the living wanting to carry on with their lives. The dead are dead and they have no use for their money anymore, do they? Honestly, you don't have a shred of familial loyalty in you, do you? 
Forget it. There's no point in talking to you anymore. I should have known better than to expect a useless girl like you to be any help to me. Mom. Whatever. I'm leaving now. I've clearly wasted my time dragging myself all the way out here. I really was naive to think that things might be different after I got married. I kept visiting you with the hope that your attitude towards me might change a little. But you're still the same as ever. I won't be coming around to see you anymore, so don't expect me. What did you just say? This is clearly that good-for-nothing husband of yours talking. From today onwards, I no longer consider you my mother. Goodbye. I really was shocked to overhear that conversation between my wife and her mother at my father's wake. I knew that my wife's family treated her terribly, but I had no idea that they were also plotting to get their hands on my father's money. It was shocking how much her mother kept insisting, even though my wife repeatedly told her no. I felt really pathetic for not being able to help my wife in that moment. All I could do was stay hidden around the corner until the conversation was over. When my mother-in-law left, I just silently went over to my wife and put my arms around her while she burst into tears. It took a lot of courage for my wife to stand up to her mother like that, but you could tell that she had been really hurt by the whole exchange. She kept apologizing over and over through her tears, and I just held her and I slowly rubbed her back. Unfortunately, this was far from the end of our problems with my wife's family. The real problem only came to light after the wake was over. Today must have been really hard for you, Chloe. Oh no, I'm sure it was much harder for you and Ryan, Meredith. How could my feelings possibly be compared to yours on a day like today? Even so, you did all you could to make sure things ran smoothly today. I'm sure your father-in-law is smiling down on you and thanking you for your efforts. You should get an early night tonight. It was the least I could do after everything he did for me when he was still with us. Oh, bless you, don't cry. But I suppose it is good to let all of the emotions out. Let's finish cleaning up and then head home. There's still a lot left to do. Wait a second, Mom. Something isn't right here. Hmm, what is it? Did someone leave something behind? I bet it was one of your father's sisters leaving. They're all so forgetful, just like him. No, it's not that. You know we had that collection for the charity that Dad loved supporting so much. Well, we had that sheet where everyone wrote down their donations, and the amount of money in the basket doesn't add up to the amount in the sheet at all. It's almost $500 short. What are you saying? That's no small amount. You say we're 500 short. How can this have happened? This really does seem to be the case. You can count again if you like. Even if you include people who donated by transfer, this amount still isn't right. Then did somebody steal it then? I hate to say it, but that does seem to be the case. I'll go and take a look at the venue CCTV. I'm sure we'll be able to find a lead. There were cameras everywhere. Well, well, well. I knew you two were a couple of pieces of work, but I didn't expect to be seeing you like this down at the police station. Did you not consider the fact that the venue might have CCTV cameras installed? There was some pretty clear and incriminating footage of you stealing the money. Oh, why did you have to go and call the police on us for? We're all family, aren't we? We could have just settled this quietly between us. Why wouldn't I call the police when there has been a theft? If you had just taken $50, I may have not gone as far as to get the police involved. But $500? Did you really think that I would just let that slide? You had my cousins fooled all right, smiling at them all sweetly and telling them that you would take over manning the collection basket while they went to take a rest. You really are despicable, you know? 
But then you were stupid enough to keep noting down the donations so that it was easy for us to take notice of how much money had been stolen. However upset you may be, how could you report your own brother-in-law to the police? He may be my brother-in-law by name, but he has never once acted brotherly towards me before. This is clearly theft, and I'm sorry to say it, but our familial relationship was certainly not enough to stop me from calling the police on you. Are you proud of yourself for stealing money that people generously donated to charity out of the kindness of their hearts? You make me sick. You had no right to lay your dirty hands on this money. And as for you, Velma, you're not getting off the hook either. There's also CCTV footage of you taking the stolen money off of Tyler, so you're complicit in this. After that, you started to be a bit more careful and wouldn't write down any new donations. But... What on earth were you planning to do with those $500 you stole, huh? Because Chloe wouldn't ask for any of the inheritance, you thought that you could just take whatever you wanted from the charity pot? What? How did you know about that? Did Chloe tell you? She didn't have to. I overheard the whole thing. Even if you did think you were completely alone, outside the bathroom wasn't exactly the most private place in the world. Did you really think that nobody saw you? You weren't being that discreet, Velma. You were raising your voice and making a huge fuss. It's a miracle that nobody else heard you. And besides, did you think that I would just let my wife suffer in silence? No, I will not let that happen. Don't you think you're being a little rude to me right now? I'm your mother-in-law. You should show some respect. If I knew you were going to treat me and my son like this, do you think I would have ever let you marry my daughter? Of course you wouldn't. If you had known how much I would love and cherish your daughter, I'm sure you wouldn't have been willing to let her marry me because you just can't stand to see her happy, can you? She will never go back and live with you ever again because all you ever do is order her around like a slave. You're just upset because she's finally realized that it's okay to live her life by herself and her purpose isn't to be perpetually subservient to others. I will never ever let her become a victim to your abuse ever again. Do you hear me? Oh, I think you're being really unfair about this whole situation, Ryan. Your family is rich, right? So you don't understand how much $500 means to my mom and I who don't have any money at all. Oh, whatever you say, I'm not going to let you off the hook, so you should just stop wasting your breath already. But it isn't my place to decide exactly how you're going to suffer. My mom is on her way to have a few words with you, Velma. She wants to try and come to a, a settlement with you. Meredith, what's going on here? This is all very confusing. I'm the one who should be asking you that, Velma. I never expected to see you down at the police station like this. Well, let me tell you right now that this is all just one big misunderstanding. A misunderstanding? Do you think that I've come here not knowing exactly what happened? What do you mean? I've already watched the incriminating CCTV footage, and Chloe told me what you said to her yesterday. I know that you and your son were the ones who stole the charity money, and I have no idea what makes you think that you can get away with saying that it was a misunderstanding when there is cold, hard evidence. You really don't have a leg to stand on right now. Well, it's just... I have been very patient with you, you know. But I won't stand for it anymore. Not only have you dared to lay hands on Chloe, you have shown blatant favoritism towards your son over her and put her to work in your house like a domestic servant. Even though she was suffering a lot, Chloe never complained. I just watched from the sidelines the whole time because I knew it wasn't my place to interfere. But it has gotten to the extent that I can't possibly let your behavior continue like this. How dare you steal the money my family and friends donated to a good cause in my late husband's name? I really think you're blowing things way out of proportion here, Meredith. Have we really done anything that bad?
Will the charity really miss that money? I'm sure they got lots of donations. You really don't care about anything but money, do you? I really don't know how you can live with yourself. Excuse me! Do you think I'm this upset because of the money? Of course not. Unlike you, I value people's feelings above material possessions. What upsets me the most is the awful way you've been treating my precious daughter-in-law. And how could you try and force her to get some of my husband's money just so that you could steal it and use it for your own selfish purposes? Well, she's my daughter. I have the right to make her do whatever I want her to do. And to her, the family that raised her should be more important than anything else. She was always more than willing to make sacrifices for us before. But she changed after she moved out and got married. She doesn't give us money anymore and she doesn't look after her brother anymore. I certainly never taught her to behave like that, so this must be thanks to your influence. Yes, as a matter of fact, I did teach her to rebel against everything she had learned from you. I taught her how to love and value herself. When your family doesn't love you, you need to love yourself twice as much to make up for it. Well, that's a very selfish way of thinking if you ask me. Should family not come before everything else? Well, if you do truly believe that, then you should love your daughter more than you love yourself. Do you love your daughter more than you love yourself? Well, I, um... Why on earth would you expect your daughter to love and respect you above everything else when you don't love and respect her at all? And you really need to stop using these underhanded methods to get your hands on some money. Are you not ashamed of yourself at all? I can't believe that you're getting this wound up just because of that one stupid girl. Well... I'm actually here to tell you that I have a proposition for you. We can solve this whole problem amicably in a way that should benefit everyone. Oh, really? I should have known you would come through. People with lots of money always have lots of sense. I knew it. You're just going to discreetly let this slide, aren't you? What? Well, of course not. How on earth could I just let something like this slide? I have no intention of forgiving you for this. Then what are you talking about? I won't press charges against you and your son if you just agree to sign this legal document stating that you will never come anywhere near Chloe ever again. It also states that by signing this, you agree to making no future demands for money, support, obligations, or anything else. You and Chloe will essentially be strangers to each other. If there's anything you don't trust me about, you can have a read for yourself. What on earth are you saying? How can you expect me to just treat my daughter as if she's a stranger? I don't think you understood me properly. The agreement is not that you treat her like a stranger. The agreement is that you agree to completely cut her off and have nothing to do with her from today onwards. By signing this paper, you are agreeing to never see her again and to never contact her in any capacity. So, you're asking me to completely cut her and the rest of you off. I'm her mother. You can't just get me to do something like this. Chloe cried again today because of you. Did you know that? She said that she was ashamed of her family and she wouldn't stop apologizing to me. Even though it wasn't her fault at all, she was in floods of tears. Do you have any idea how much it breaks my heart to see her like that? Even when your daughter is still apologizing and crying on your behalf, you still have the audacity to behave atrociously. 
Well, she must have been crying because she wants you to forgive us, Shirley. Huh. There really is no end to your delusions, is there? Did I not just tell you that she was crying because she was ashamed of you? Well, what's the use in crying for a stupid reason like that? That won't help anybody. Anyway, I'm done with this conversation. I'm going to get myself a lawyer. If you think this is going to be solved so easily, then you need to think again. Ah, oh, Velma. Didn't you say you were going to get yourself a lawyer? Where is the lawyer? Did you end up coming alone in the end? Well, the thing is... <clears throat> Well, I had time to think about it, and I decided that it would probably just be best for me to sign the document and be done with it. I thought that a lawyer would probably just be unnecessary. And anyway, this is a family matter, and I'm not sure I'd be comfortable with the idea of an outsider hearing all our business. It's clear that whichever lawyer you went to, nobody would be willing to represent you for this case after hearing your situation. No lawyer would have been able to turn this in your favor, even if they were the best in the industry. And I think you know it. Well, I thought it would just be best to go ahead with a settlement. Oh, dear. But now I've actually changed my mind. I've decided that I don't want to settle things amicably anymore. Wait, what? That's not what you said the other week. You said as long as I signed the document, everything would be settled. Well, that was a week ago. You made such a fuss about not wanting to cut ties with your daughter that I decided to throw away the document, since you made it quite obvious that you weren't willing to sign it. If I decide to sue you, we can just file for a restraining order anyway, which is an even better arrangement. I thought about it and I decided that it made no sense to give you the easy way out when I could choose to make things so much harder for you and still come out on top. How can you be saying all this all of a sudden? And you, what are you doing just standing there saying nothing? Mom, please, let's just stop this now. Things are getting ugly. I can't believe that this is how you repay me for raising you, feeding you, providing you with the clothes on your back. Let's get things straight here. Considering all the work you made me do, who really owes whom for this so-called upbringing you gave me? I've spent my whole life being at your beck and call and pandering to my brother over everything. What's the big deal? I told you so many times already. The oldest daughter needs to make sacrifices for the family. You should live and die for our family and our family only. And now what? Because you got a little comfy with your in-laws, you're now deciding to cut us off. This is unbelievable. It really is. Ugh. Don't you dare try to lay a finger on my daughter-in-law ever again. Next time, I might not be able to hold back, and I'll do more than just slap you. You've lost your mind. I'm calling the police on you. I'm going to tell them that you dare to hit me. I'm going to sue you for unprovoked violence. Do whatever you want. Paying a small settlement fee would be enough to close a case like that. But you wouldn't be happy with just a small amount, would you? And anyway... No amount of money is enough to equate to the emotional damage that has been done to poor Chloe over the years. Oh! The settlement is now off the table, and now your son is officially a thief. You won't be able to afford to bail him out, so he'll definitely have to serve time in jail. Is this all okay with you, Chloe? Oh yes, this is all fine with me. They need to pay the price for what they have done. And having some time for a little self-reflection will do wonders for my brother in terms of character building. He's been spoiled and coddled his whole life, so it's about time he knew what it's like to have to take responsibility for his actions. Okay, if you're happy with the arrangements, then I'm happy with the arrangements. Well, good luck with everything, Velma.
You really have got your work cut out for you. Chloe and I are off to eat something tasty together, so we'd best get going now. Come on, Chloe, let's go. Yes, let's go, Meredith. Goodbye, Mom. Hey, you can't just leave like that. You need to help my son get off the hook. I already said that I would sign the document already. I'm not going to let you get away with this. An agreement with my mother-in-law has gone down the drain. She threw away the opportunity to make this easier for herself, and she gave us no other choice but to go ahead with the lawsuit. Since then, all communications have been through our lawyer, and we avoid any direct contact. The lawyer says that even though this is technically an issue between relatives, the fact that it's between in-laws suggests that a prison sentence is definitely on the cards for my mother-in-law. Furthermore, considering the lingering evidence her history of abusive behavior towards my wife, she really has nowhere to hide. Now, my once proud mother-in-law's attitude has completely changed. She's crying, begging and clinging on for dear life. My wife, my mom and I have all changed our phone numbers, so the poor lawyer is the one receiving her calls on our behalf. My brother-in-law is also making a fuss about having a criminal record, as if he thought that he could commit a crime and just get away without any kind of punishment. It just goes to show how used to he was with getting away with murder. After everything that happened, my wife and I decided to move in with my mom. My wife didn't think twice about it, saying it's the least that we can do for her when she's all on her own now and she's always done so much for her. I feel really privileged to see them spending every day together, forming a beautiful mother-daughter relationship just like the one my wife should have had with her real mother. My wife is slowly gaining her self-confidence back and is blossoming under the knowledge that she finally has a family who loves and cherishes her. She's trying her best to shower my mom with love as well, and she doesn't feel the absence of my dad too much. But sometimes I still can't help but stand on the sidelines and feel a little jealous of how well they get along with each other. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to like and subscribe.